Hey everyone, my name is Nikki Young and this is Serial Napper, an international true crime podcast. I'm back with another true crime story to lull you to sleep or perhaps to give you nightmares. I feel like I say this a lot at the beginning of many of the cases that I cover, but this is another one that will outrage you. It's another story where religious beliefs prevail over common sense and humanity, resulting in the loss of innocent life. Shortly after 8 p.m. on September 24th, 2021, the San Jose Police Department received a call about a three-year-old little girl named Aralee Naomi Proctor, who was unresponsive, not breathing, and likely deceased. The call was made by her mother, Claudia Hernandez Santos. Emergency medical workers arrived and they took Aralee to a hospital where she was pronounced dead less than an hour after that call came in. It was then that police would learn that little Aralee died after her mother, grandfather, and uncle attempted to perform an exorcism on her, believing that she was possessed by a demon. What they did to this little girl, the behavior of her mother afterwards, and another post-exorcism incident involving a young child will haunt you. So let's jump right in. On September 24, 2021, just after 8 p.m., the San Jose Police Department were alerted to a call made by a 25-year-old named Claudia Elisa Hernandez, who reported that her three-year-old daughter, Airly, was unresponsive, limp, not breathing, and likely deceased. When they arrived on the scene, they found the location of the call came from a home that also had a church operating out of its back room in the basement called the Iglesia Evangelica Apostles e Profeta Church, which claims to be a small Pentecostal denomination church. Medical personnel had already arrived on the scene, and they had located Little Airely lying on the floor of the church, and they began to attempt CPR, but to no avail. She was transported to the Valley Medical Center, where she was pronounced dead on arrival around 45 minutes after that initial call came in. There were three adult family members at the church with the child that evening, including her mother Claudia, her uncle and Claudia's brother, Rene Hernandez Jr., and her grandfather, who was Claudia's father, Rene Hernandez Sr. It wasn't initially very clear how the little girl had just stopped breathing or what had happened to her, but it's not normal for a vibrant three-year-old girl to just suddenly die. So investigators quickly split up the three adults to interview them separately. According to statements given to the police on the scene, all three adults believed that Airely was possessed by a demon and they had brought her to the church to pray over her, attempting to get the demon out of her. Airely's mother, Claudia, said that on the evening prior, on September 23rd, they were at their home when her daughter woke up in the middle of the night screaming and crying and she couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. So she called her brother, Rene Hernandez Jr., to come over because she believed that the little girl was possessed and thought that they needed to pray over her. The praying didn't seem to calm Airely down, surprise, surprise, and she would continue to cry out throughout the entire evening. So around 6 a.m. the following morning, they got in their car and they drove over to the church to basically try to perform an exorcism. When they got there, they laid her at the altar and Claudia had attempted to stick her fingers down her daughter's throat while squeezing her neck to try to get her to throw up. They believed that she could eventually dispel the demon by vomiting. Claudia described how Aralee would quote-unquote fall asleep several times throughout the attempt to make her vomit while she continued to push down on her throat. At some point during the exorcism, Airly's grandfather and Claudia's father, Rene Hernandez Sr., showed up at the church to assist with their prayer. All three would hold the child while she screamed and cried out, attempting to get her to throw up. One would hold her by the neck, while another would hold her around her abdomen, while the other held her legs. According to the grandfather, she had tried to fight back, scratching at his arm, screaming to be put down as he held onto her. 
After hours of going through this process of trying to get her to throw up, finally she did. And Claudia described it as a clear purple liquid. Still, they continued. At around 7 p.m., Erlie's uncle, Rene Hernandez Jr., knelt down beside the toddler who was lying on the floor of the church, and he placed one hand on the victim's chest and one on her back. He then applied pressure for around 10 minutes while he closed his eyes and prayed. If you're not getting the visual here, he has one hand on top of the three-year-old's chest and one underneath her on her back, and he's squeezing her for a full 10 minutes, according to his statement. When he opened his eyes, Erlie was completely limp and no longer breathing, and they believed that she had died during that prayer. They did not attempt to revive her by performing CPR, and they did not immediately call 911. Instead, they continued to pray over her. And then, one to two hours later, they called the emergency line to let them know that little three-year-old Erily had died. The autopsy performed by the medical examiner confirmed basically everything that they had said in their statements. Erily's cause of death was asphyxia due to suffocation, due to mechanical asphyxia and smothering. In the reports, it was noted that she had visible injuries to her body, particularly on her face, around the eyes, and numerous bruises on her neck. She also had injuries to her tongue and her mouth. She had multiple blunt force injuries across her chest and back and extremities, as well as internal bleeding to the heart, aorta, pancreas, small and large bowels. Her stomach contents were basically empty. She had not eaten since the day before she died, pretty much a full 24 hours. And she had only been given around 6 ounces of water within the last 24 hours or so. She was likely very dehydrated and starving. The manner of death was homicide. Little Erily had clearly suffered at the hands of her mother, her uncle, and her grandfather. I always think it's crazy what people will do in the name of religion, but this incident in particular is shocking and tragic. Erily's grandfather, Rene Hernandez Sr., is the leader of that little church that rented out the space in the back of that townhome. He claims to be a certified pastor and has since said to the media that he feels pain, but he doesn't think that it was the exorcism that caused her to die, which just goes to show how deeply indoctrinated this family is. He said to the newspaper, quote, If you read the Bible, you'll see that Jesus casts away demons and made sick people healthy again. It's not when I want to do it, it's when God and his will wants to heal the person. The preacher is like an instrument of God. What we do is what God says. The Pentecostal faith is very prominent in the Latino community, and it's very common for them to believe in everyday miracles. However, exorcisms are definitely not common or typical. This was a very unusual incident. Before we go any further, a word from our sponsor. We're all trying to eat better, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors that you love, but without all the bad stuff. The variety pack for flavors are cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. This pack has 0 grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only 4 net grams of carbs. Only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. I've got to say that the fruity is probably my favorite kind. You know that other fruity cereal that most of us kids grew up loving? Well, this one looks, smells, and tastes just like it, except it's healthy for you, but you'd never know it. Now here's the problem. My daughter, well, <laughs> she wants me to share with her, and I kind of don't want to. But it's nice to know that if I do decide to be a super nice mom and share, she'll go off to school with something in her tummy other than a bowl full of pure sugar. Go to magicspoon.com slash cereal napper to grab a variety pack and try it today. 
And be sure to use my promo code SERIALNAPPER, all one word, at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash cerealnapper and use the code cerealnapper, all one word, to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. Now back to our story. The police waited several months to make any kind of arrests, saying that they wanted to wait for a full comprehensive medical examiner's report. Because of the circumstances, they wanted enough evidence to build a solid case. This was very complicated, especially when you add the religious aspect to it. While the investigation was going on, Airlie's mother, Claudia, created a YouTube video on her YouTube channel. And it's shocking. Watching this video, you would never know that her little girl had just recently been murdered, in my opinion, of course. And in my opinion, she was murdered by her hand. Now, I'm going to play you a clip here in a minute, but it's important to note that this was uploaded to YouTube just four months after Airly died. It's 40 minutes long, and the majority of the video is basically Claudia sitting in her car, chewing gum, smiling, and laughing, even as she talks about little Airly. There are a few points where it kind of seems like maybe there's some sort of internal battle happening within her, and maybe there's some sort of gut feeling that she's getting that's telling her this is very wrong. But she quickly snaps out of it and smiles, laughs, and moves on with the conversation. But you need to hear it for yourself. Listen up. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, or if it's your first time watching my videos, hi. <laughs> I want to mention two things. First things first, the giveaway. So for the giveaway, I told you, I told you guys to message me on Instagram with their sale or cash app. And guess who did it? Drum roll. <laughs> Nobody did it. Nobody hit me up. Nobody messaged me their cash app, their sale. If you guys have me on social media or my Instagram or Snapchat, I posted how me and my girl, Evelyn, made a, um, a page for to support women, right? To support women. Um, yeah, like, I am so excited. And I am so excited because we have so many ideas, you know? And yeah, so if you're a woman or if you're a girl, you could... You could follow it and you could always hit us up you could always message us and we're there we're there for you but um, on today's video as you guys saw the title i'm gonna be talking about my daughter okay i'm not gonna be talking about how she passed away but i'm gonna be talking about who she was like when since before i got pregnant when i got pregnant you know everything because i I want to talk about that. I want you guys to know who she was because if she was alive, I would definitely have her in my videos, you know, and she was such a sweet baby. Like, I don't think I've met a baby like her. And I'm not saying that because she was my daughter, but because my baby was so sweet. She was so sweet. Like, she would tell me, I love you so many times during the day. She would tell me, te amo, te amo, you know. Like, I was and she was like, oh, Lord like damn mom oh, my baby you know and i was like damn mom. like i would always tell her you know and she would always ask me she would appreciate i don't know where she would come into me she's like hug hug <laughs> you know she would just ask me for hugs and and she was such a helpful baby too like when she would see me cook she would be like baby cook you know she would ask me to cook to to help cook with <laughs> with the cooking. You got it. When yeah. she was doing clean, she would ask me okay. for help. She would ask me to help. She would tell me to. <laughs> she, would, she would ask me to allow her to help me. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, I think I have a video of her doing dishes <laughs> because she would. She learned to do the dishes. She just. She just did it like she I, I I didn't ask her to do it. She just wanted it. She just wanted to do it, you know? And 
yeah she was just like every time she would want to help you know i remember she would love look in the morning because she would sleep with me you know since she was a baby she would sleep with me um so every morning when like i told you guys like when she started talking more she would be like she would be like morning sun <laughs> she would say morning sun and then she was so like she was such a happy baby you know she would she loved her friends like when when she, i don't know she just she's just like she just had so much love to give to to others you know she <laughs> she was just a happy baby you know and, and it's like it's so hard now you know because going from having her every day to not having her at all you know it's it's so hard you know like everywhere it's always something that reminds me of her you know i remember when we would go to the store she would always want to come with me but you know even when i had to go to work she would like she wouldn't want me to go to work she would want me to stay with her you know but like i had to go but the thing is like i was so blessed to have like i was so blessed with her dad because he would help me so much you know like i was able to if i wanted to go out with my friends i was able to go out you know because he would help me you know and he was such a he's such a good dad you know like he loved her like it, it, it's it's a lot but you know it's hard it's hard because it's just a lot you know when i think back and i look back at everything it's It's hard, you know, and, I, and and to think that I'm not gonna see her grow up, you know, like uh, how I thought that I was gonna see her grow up, you know, like <sighs> but you know it's okay. It's okay because I know she's in a better place, you know, and God knows why he allows these things, you know. And I know everybody wants to know what happened to her, like her the cause of her death. And I will talk to you guys about it. You know, I will but when I'm ready it's just hard you know it's hard because you know being a mom I think it was it's one of the best things that you could be you know like it's 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 amazing you know it's amazing how you could have another you could have a human you know I remember <laughs> even when she was one I still can't believe that I had a baby I was just like, I have my daughter, like, she's mine, you know, I was just like, she's mine. <laughs> I don't know, guys, I just felt like I wanted to share this with you guys, you know, to talk about her, to tell you guys who she was, and, you know, like I said, my baby was such a happy baby, you know, and, and I don't know, I, I, I could sit here and be negative about the thing, like, oh, like, I wish I could go back, and this and this and that, but it's like, there is no point of me doing that, you know, because I cannot change what is, you know, it is what it is. So I've, I've learned to think positive, you know, because it's, it's, it's many reasons why God took her, you know, and I sit here and I think like, oh, what if, if something would have happened to her, you know, what if she would have had like a sickness or or like what if something would have happened to her or like i don't know it's, it's a lot you know and 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 at the same time like i i don't know like 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 i told you guys like i i can see here being negative but as like and be negative like oh not being negative but like be sad about that whole situation that she passed away but it's like, there's no point, you know, because it is what it is. It is what it is. You know, she's not here with me. It is what it is, you know? And um, and it's like, what's the point? You know, I'm just going to be getting myself, putting myself down. When there's no point for me to do that, you know, like, I cannot change the past. And, and I, I got to be positive about the situation, you know, like at least she's not suffering you know like in this world we suffer so much you know and, and especially nowadays like everything is just so bad like everything just going downhill you know and that's what i'm thankful for you know that she's not gonna grow up in that world 
like in the world that we live in, you know. Even though there is a lot of positive things, and I could say like, oh, I'm not gonna see her grow up, this and that. But like I told you, like there's no point of me doing that, you know, because it is what it is. It is what it is, you know. So yeah, like of course when I think about her, you know, I get sad and I cry and I miss her. Of course, I miss her every day, every second of the day, you know. And you know what? I I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit. Like I remember after she passed away. It's crazy, you know, because when she passed away, she was with me. You know, of course, I'm her mom. Why would she not be with me? You know, but it's crazy how it, it, it's just a lot. You know, it's a lot. But but if you know, if you don't know, then you don't know. You know, and the thing is, like, if you weren't there when she passed away, then whatever you want to believe or whatever you want to think that happened it's not valid because you were not there it's not the reality of how things happen you know like i was there i know what happened to her you know and one thing i'm not gonna do is lie about how she how she passed away when i tell you guys how she passed away and the people that know i've been 100 percent honest you know i've been real because why would i sit here and lie about how she passed away you know and that's something that gets to me because it's like people weren't even there but they want to be out here saying this and that because of how the situation looks but if you weren't there then you don't know you know and that's why what people say or if you've heard something about what happened to my daughter if it doesn't come from me then it's not valid because you were not there you were not there you know and you know and a lot of people turn on me because after my daughter passed away you know a lot of people thought like a lot of things because after when after my daughter passed away because of how the situation looked but like i said if you weren't there if you don't know what happened then whatever you want to be out here saying whatever you want to be out here making people believe then that's really on you you know and the thing is like i don't worry too much about that because god knows the truth you know and the truth always comes out it always comes out and you know people want to be out here like look what i know i understand one thing is saying what you think it is but another thing is out here making people it's being out here <laughs> making people believe what is not you know like trying to turn them against me like people could say no but i care about her about the baby that's why i'm saying like no 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 because you're moving how you're moving and you're feeling how you're feeling you know but it is what it is and i always say that you know and one quote in particular that really just punched me in the gut was when she said i could sit here and be negative but there's no point in me doing that i cannot change what is it is what it is and she repeats that a lot it is what it is she talks as if something out of her control happened to her daughter, as if she didn't have anything to do with it. In my opinion, she killed her daughter. Her actions are what resulted in her daughter's death, but you'd never know it by listening to her. Just six days after uploading the video, Claudia was arrested on January 31st. She's now charged with felony child abuse leading to her daughter's death. Her brother and her father wouldn't be arrested until May 11th, but they are charged with the very same offense. Of course, now that they've had some time to think about it, think about what they did, and to create a narrative that sounds better in their favor, Rene Hernandez Jr., Arlie's uncle, he has recanted his statement that he put his hands on her chest and back and squeezed. He now says that never happened. He also now claims that after it appeared that Arlie was not breathing, he tried to give her mouth to mouth to resuscitate her. According to his statement to police, he left this out of his initial testimony because he didn't think that they would believe him and he was scared. Now this is an ongoing case. It hasn't yet gone to trial, so of course it's one that I will be following closely. Interestingly enough, it was only recently made public by the police. I'm not sure exactly why they were keeping it quiet, but they hadn't released any information until just last month in May of 2022. Again, this is one that I will be following very closely, and you can find any updates over on my Facebook group. Just search Serial Society True Crime Discussion Group. Interestingly enough, this was not the only criminal incident related to this church. A woman named Yesenia Guadalupe Ramirez was charged with kidnapping a baby. 
along with an accomplice named Jose Ramon Portillo, they snatched the baby out of the grandmother's apartment and hid him for 20 hours inside their home. The kidnapper had met this grandmother of the baby at this very same church and targeted her and the baby for this kidnapping. There isn't any known motive for the kidnapping, and this is an ongoing case as well, but you have to wonder, what the hell is going on in this supposed church? Claudia Hernandez Santos faces 25 years to life in prison if she's convicted. And I'd love to know your thoughts on this. After hearing what she has to say in her YouTube video, do you think that this could be a case of insanity, even if only temporarily? Do you think she knew what she was doing? Was this intentional murder or an accident? And is religion an excuse? Let me know what you think. It really breaks my heart to think about that little girl screaming and crying through the night because she probably had a nightmare or maybe suffered from night terrors and just wanted the comfort of her mother. Only for her mother to completely turn on her and perform this exorcism that would kill her. I have a five-year-old daughter and she has nightmares and I can't imagine doing this to her or doing anything other than simply giving her a big hug and reassuring her that it's okay if she wakes up in the middle of the night crying. But again, I'd love to know what you think. That's it for me tonight. If you want to reach out, you can find me on Facebook at Serial Napper. You can also search for me on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Check me out on Twitter at Serial underscore Napper, or I'm on YouTube, Nikki Young Serial Napper, and that's all one word. And I'd love if you could give me a thumbs up and subscribe on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe, stay kind, especially in the comments. Bye.